I'm Brianna Gottberg, a senior on the volleyball team. I would like to thank all of our current PEF members for your support of the Bears Club. Your contributions have made it possible for me and other student athletes here at Lenore Rhine to fulfill our dreams of participating in intercollegiate athletics. If you are not currently a Bears Club member, I hope you will take this opportunity to join our team today. Thanks again for your support and go Bears! The room got quiet. Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, it's a great day to be a bear, right? Yeah, Here we go. Yeah. So this is a very, very special day in the history of Lenore Ryan football. We've got a special guest, we are not guest, a special uh, member of our family to introduce to you. Uh, and I uh, want to give you a little bit of history, how we got where we are today. Uh, about, uh, I guess, almost three weeks ago, Ian Shields announced he was going to Jacksonville University, uh, at which time we immediately formed a search committee uh, to engage a national search to find the very best qualified football coach in the entire country, and we have succeeded in doing that. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. So, so the committee acted very deliberately, basically ran a three-step process. The first was to do an intensive review of the, uh, of the uh, resumes and records of the uh, in huge number of applicants we received for the position. Following that, the committee did a, uh, a, a lengthy phone conversations with about uh, 12 of the top candidates and reviewed those, and then uh, following that, we had five individuals here to campus to interview in depth with the committee to make sure we had the right person. We went into this process believing and uh, accurately believing that Lenore Ryan has uh, one of the premier football programs in the country and probably the top uh, private school Division II program in the country. Uh, given the level of interest in our program, uh, I think it bears out that that was an accurate assessment of who we are today. So the, the individual who uh, was the top candidate from screening the, uh, the initial resumes was the same person who was the top candidate after the phone interviews and was the same person who was the top candidate after the on-campus interviews. That is uh, quite remarkable and it was, of course, the unanimous choice of the search committee. Uh, this individual uh, started his uh, career at Fairmont State where he uh, was offensive coordinator. That was his uh, alma mater. Uh, uh, ran uh, an, an incredible offense there that he developed. Uh, went from there for a year to uh, Northern Michigan as an offensive coordinator, then came back from there to spend uh, 10 years and two times at uh, Cal University of Pennsylvania. As offensive coordinator there, he uh, averaged, I think out of, t and as later as head coach, I think his teams averaged uh, over 30 points a year, nine of the 10, 10 years he was there. So, so a very impressive offensive production. He did go from, from Cal PA to be the head coach at Concord University in West Virginia for two years. And uh, I must admit that in the two years he was there, he inherited a team that had won one game in two years. He went six and five, eight and three. And the highlight of his career there is he beat Lenore Ryan twice. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to make sure that can never happen again. So, so, so. Uh, uh, that's right. And, and because of those Lenore Ryan victories, Cal PA quickly brought him back there as head coach, where in four years he, uh, he averaged, uh, I think, eight wins a season. Actually, it was 7.75, but we rounded up to eight wins a season at, at, at Cal PA and, and, and uh, uh, ran an incredible offense that, uh, that, that's one of the nation's leaders. Uh, uh, we also had, as part of our goal in, fi in hiring the right head coach, to find someone not only who knew how to win on the field, but also knows how to win in their personal life. Because everybody here at Lenore Ryan knows that uh, we are here to develop young men, not just to win on the field, that is important, but also to win in their everyday lives. And so we were very, very, very interested in finding an individual who met those characteristics. So, and we succeeded. So I'd like to introduce to you today the head football coach at Lenore Ryan, uh, Mike Keller. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to warn him about Tommy, but before, 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 before I let Mike speak, I, I want to introduce uh, part of his family. His, his wife, Missy, is, is with him today. Uh, his, his oldest child, Deidre, his daughter, is uh, here. And uh, 
Diderot wants to pursue a career in athletic training. We got options. And, 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 and his, uh, his, old, his oldest son, Jared, who uh, plays a little football. Uh, and and, uh, and, and my, Mike and Missy have two other children, Anthony and Jacob, who were unable to come because I think they're competing in various other sports. They're basketball players. Uh, basketball players. Yeah, we, we can work on that. But, uh, but, but uh, Mike, say some words to us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Powell. Um, I want to start by thanking Dr. Power for, or Powell for doing such a good job choosing the right coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in all honesty, I got an email about two weeks ago from Brent saying, when would you be available? And uh, I emailed him back and said, I could talk whenever you're ready. And five minutes later, the phone rang, and it was Brent. And, and he explained to me how the process would work. And we did a couple of phone interviews, and I came down for an interview. And it was a very thorough process. They answered as many of my questions as I got to answer their questions. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be here and be part of a program that, that I view. My goal is to always, has always been I want to be part of a national program. I want to be at a place that's committed, a place that sees themselves as winners. That's important to me. And, you know, this is a two-part process for me. The first part was leaving Cal and how hard that is for me personally. I've got some great friends there, uh, Coach Lockhart and Dr. Armenti, everything they did to bring me there as an assistant coach and then to move on to, to Concord and have some success, some success there. And, yeah, I, I'm really not sorry about those wins. <laughs> I mean, I could tell you that I am, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, but Dr. Aloya and, and the people that Concord have brought me and gave me an opportunity to be a head coach, that was so important to my development. And then to bring me back to Cal to be the head coach and to give me an opportunity to, to be here. I, you know, Dr. Karen Harpy, our athletic director, is a great friend and it was tremendous into our development at Cal. And leaving those kids and those people, that part is hard for me. But coming here, to be quite frank, is easy. It's an easy decision. I've always, I've always thought some of the best players in the country. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out the best players in the country are in the southern part of the state or in the of the country. Uh, you just look at Alabama, Georgia, and all these people and how much they're winning. You can win national championships in the South, and to me, that's what it's about. You know, I think Brent on the interview said, you know, do you have a slogan or do you have anything that you believe in? And and, and I really never put it in the words, so to speak. So, you know, it's a phone interview, so you got to make one up, you know, as you're going up. <laughs> so I said, yeah, you, you know, we, and we really do talk about this all the time. We talk about winning every day. And Lou Holtz explained winning as what's important now. You have to have a definition of winning. Now, in the football world, it's easy because they keep score. You know, but I think they keep score in your everyday life. You know, I want to recruit kids here who are do right people, who want to do right when people aren't looking. The best way for me to explain it is if they came to a stoplight in the middle of the night and there was no one around, they would wait for it to turn green before they went through it, which I don't always do, but, you know, I like to think of <laughs> Well, my wife don't let me out in the middle of the night. <laughs> but, you know, so you want, you want high character people. You want people who, who want to go to class. Now, you know, I, I've, got, I've got four children they are all successful, but, and, and they want to do right, but they need dad's guidance. And that's my job as the head coach. So I need to give them, these kids, the guidance to be do right people. I give them the tools to be successful. But I want to recruit kids who internally want to be successful and, and not just go to class, but win at class. You know, so that was something that we, we chose as our model. We want to win every day. I don't want kids sitting in the back with their headphones on, you know, with no, up, no sleep, no preparation for the class. I want kids who are going to come to class and sit up front and do right and be, I want them to win at class. I want them to walk out of that class and say, I won today. You know, and I, I, when we go to the weight room, I don't want kids who just get through the weight room and do, do the minimum effort in the weight room. I want them to win in the weight room. I want them to walk out that day saying, I'm better today than I was yesterday. And I don't care if they're the worst athlete on the team or if they're a future NFL player. If they improve a little bit each day in everything they do, then they're going to be successful. And I want them to come to the practice field and take that same attitude in everything that they do. I want them to take that same attitude in their personal life. I would talk to our kids all the time about, okay, when I went to college at Glenville State, which is where I initially went, played for Coach Rodriguez, and I need to give a public thank you to him for everything he did for me as a player, and Doug Sams, who gave me the first opportunity uh, to get into coaching. i got to thank those guys publicly as well. But when I went there, I, one of my roommates was an avid weightlifter. Well, I wanted to stay up late and watch TV and, and mess around and be a college student, and he wanted to go to bed at 10 o'clock and make sure he got up the next morning and ate right so he could get a good lift. And... That's the kind of kids that I want to have here. I want them to say it's not just about lifting. It's just not about school. It's just not about, you know, the practice field and your social life. It's about doing the right preparation to be successful 
when those things come up. If you go to class and just open your notebook up the first time, you're not going to be very successful. Same thing with the game. I mean, there's an old saying in coaching that the game is won before it's ever played. That's the same thing in every aspect that you do. Um, I'm excited about Lenore Ryan, to be quite honest with you. When we played here in 2010, I was the head coach at Concord. I left here in warm-ups. It was the best warm-ups I ever had because the rock and roll music was just, I mean, it was right on point, you know. And in between each play, you know, the, the, the PA announcers and the things they did, and I thought, it was a great game, and I don't know how we won. We got the Mayo kid, got hurt, and I was just throwing guys in there to catch passes. And then he came back, and, and he's an All-American. He ended up probably winning it for us. Uh, but when I left here that night, on the way home, I told Missy, I said, man, that right there, that is a great atmosphere. That's a great place. And I'll tell you a little secret. When I went to Cal, I met with our athletic director, and I said, we need to do what Lenore Ryan does on game day. It's the best game day atmosphere I've ever – and I played in two Final Fours. And it's the best game day atmosphere I've ever seen. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about the Alabama-Auburn game. I'm talking about the D2 level. It's the best I've seen. Well, we tried to replicate it, and you can't do it. I think you've got to have Neil to be part of that. I don't know. I mean, he, and hopefully he laid that groundwork that we'll have that moving forward. But it was a great atmosphere, and I thought, man, that is a national job. And, uh, you know, it's December. There's head coaching jobs open everywhere. There's coordinating jobs open everywhere. And, you know, you look at it. You look at all those places. And every time I look at one, I go, ah, I don't, nah, nah. You know, I'd get a call. Hey, I'm thinking about going here. Would you go to the court? Nah. Uh, Lenore Ryan came open, and I was, I was interested. I thought there was a place where you could go, and you could win every day. You could have success. And there's going to be bumps along the road. I mean, there always, there always is. You know, you don't, things don't go as smoothly as you plan them at these press conferences. You know, <laughs> it's just the way it works. But we're going to work at it. I'm going to bring together a, a, a good quality staff, a staff that can recruit North Carolina and South Carolina and get into the Georgia and, and do well. I think that's important. You know, we got to have we got to have people, um, but we got to have we got to have support, and that's what that's really why my choice to Little Ryan came is because they want to win. If you look around the NFL, you know, I, I grew up in West Virginia, really Morgantown area, and the Steelers were prominent in the '70s. Well, since I've been alive, they've had three head coaches. They, their organization wins. You know, now they get the right guy and all that. They win together. I've always believed and always will believe that organization. It's not about one man. It's about a team of people working together. And that's important from the president to the athletic director to the alums to the friends of the program to me and my staff all the way down to, you know, the guy who's, who's our ball boy. It's important that the whole organization's pulling the same way. You've got to have a good training staff. You've got to have a good strength staff. All that's important, and I believe you have that here. All those things were in place. You just needed a head football coach. And uh, one thing that I am good at is picking jobs. You know, and when, 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 I, was at, <laughs> when I was at Cal, I mean, I won a lot, but that didn't just happen. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not jumping into bad situations. Uh, when I went to Cal, they had a good, great head coach. They had a great defensive staff. They had a good situation. They needed an offensive coordinator. And I went there for the interview, and I, and I thought, man, if they get the right guys, the OC, this job could really take off. And we went from a, a PSAC perennial, one of the worst teams, to we won seven straight conference championships, four straight Final Fours, all those things. Well, you know, if you do that a while, if you're a coordinator, your next move is what? You'd be a head coach. Well, Concord had won one game in two years, so everyone thought we won at Cal because we had all the best players. So I said, well, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to go someplace where no one can say we got the best players, and I'm going to go to Concord. Well, when I went down for the interview, the first person I met for breakfast was the president, and he talked about what it took to win, and he was an athletic guy. And I left there that day saying, or that breakfast saying, he, he wants to win. And then the AD, and then the vice president, and then I met some key alums. And I walked out of there, and it was fully funded, and they could, I could get coaches, and they were redoing the locker room. And I, I came home, my kid, Jared, was a lot shorter then, and I said, uh, I said, I think I'm going to go to Concord. And they said, oh, they ain't won. I said, they, 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 don't have, they don't know how to win. They got a bunch of good people there that want to win and will do what it takes to win, they need someone that can help them along the way. Now here, you're kind of in a, you're, you're in a similar situation, but you're not. You know how to win. You've won. I'm just going to come in and win differently and hopefully win one more game than you won three years ago. You know, that's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dr. Powell's the math guy. He figured out that 7.75. I was smart enough to think three years back is how I was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, we're, we're going to win. That's important to me. Um, I'm not going to make any guarantees on record. That's just foolish. You know, we're going to try to win them all. And, uh, and we won't. Along the way, you always have bumps in the road. But we'll, we'll tee it back up and play the next week. And we're going to play hard. And we're going to make you proud. And, and it'll be exciting. 
You know, that now in between the rock and roll music, you may actually see a football in the air where it's not pitched. You know, that'll be different. <laughs> yeah, I, I promised Hank we played good pass defense, and that's some cool stuff to say on the interview, but now I'm like really worried about our pass defense, you know. <laughs> so we, uh, we'll get after it. It'll be fun along the way. I'll be, you know, my office door is always open. I know some of you are going to take advantage of that. I, I have no problem with that because uh, I know you're there for the right reasons. You want to see us win, and you want to help us win. And um, if it was if it was different, the door would be open. But I, but I know that it, that that you guys are all here with the you got the same goals that I've got. And if you didn't, I wouldn't be here. To be honest with you, I had a good job. I wasn't unemployed. I wasn't looking for something to stay in coaching. I had a great situation. And uh, and but this is a better situation. And that's the way coaching that's the way the coaching world works. I'm 44 years old. My youngest son's 15. I would like to see him graduate high school and come through college here. And then. You know, that makes me mid-50s, then we'll see what happens from there. But I'm not in the place in my life where I'm in the, interested in jumping around. You know, I'm in a place in life where, where I want to settle down and, and uh, do a good job and win where I'm at. And we'll see how, I'm not going to predict the future, we'll see how it goes. So I'm assuming there's going to be a, one or two questions, so <laughs> I'll open it up now. Just shoot them at me, I'm ready. Or at least I'll pretend I'm ready. <laughs> Garrett Van Gimmeren with the uh, Hickory Daily Record. You said you wanted to be a part of a national program. Mm -hmm. um, you certainly had success at yeah. California, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, so what are some real specifics that really entice you about this job? Well, I think a big part of it was location. You know, the fact that you're in the South, you got a great recruiting area. You could be the greatest recruiter in the world, and if there's not good kids around, it doesn't do you any good. You know, I think it's important that you get kids that will bleed for your area, you know, that grew up. Want to put that they're playing in front of their moms and dads as much as possible. I mean, I wish we could get 100 kids from the school across the street. I mean, that that's me, but it doesn't work like that. You know, there may be one kid that plays there, maybe 10 that plays there, but I'm going to recruit locally as much as I can, and then we'll expand, you know, as we go. I always tell our staff, recruiting is like going to Walmart. If everything you need is at Walmart, then you, you don't need to go a bunch of stores, but it's not. Not everything you need is there. So, you know, being in the South, being uh, at a place that's funded, you know, that's important. And, uh, Funding works in a lot of ways. It probably starts first and foremost with staffing. You know, if you're going to recruit, and I'm the only guy out on the road with one cell phone and one car, we're not going to get very many kids. But if you got eight other full-time coaches, as if they as they do here, and we could spread those guys, you know, then then we spread the areas in which we're able to recruit. And then I got to get, you know, so and you got to be able to pay coaches who are experts at their position. You know, if you got if you got a poor salary pool, then you're going to have I mean, you guys work in business, it's the way it works. I mean, the less money you got, the less qualified you get. I mean, I started out working in college coaching for, for my first job was, was it $1,200? It was, tw no, it was five, 600. The next year, I got 1,200, and I gave half of it to Jimbo's brother because I wanted him to come with me because we were buddies. And uh, I said, well, 1,200, 600 ain't making no difference in my life. My first full-time job was 18,000. So you, but you, you were also getting a 22-year-old coach who didn't know as much, you know? So that's kind of the way that works. The, the better pool you have, uh, the more coaches you can get, the more winning you're going to do. And then, obviously, when you get them here, you know, you got to have scholarship money <coughs> and a way, way to fund kids because good kids have options. You know, they, they're, just, they're not just one school. What kind of offense we were running? Well, <laughs> you know. Tell me, tell me about that ball over there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we will be as multiple as our kids allow us to be. Okay. Uh, but we, we will not be. Um, I think the option's a great offense. Um, I played in the run and shoot in college for a while. Uh, I hate extreme offenses because I don't think they prepare you for all the different scenarios in which your team can see. I, I, I like to be as multiple on offense and defense as I can because the best way to, for you really, if you think about it, you've got 15 spring practices where you want your good players going against your good players. You don't want scout teams ones versus fours all the time. You want, you want to sharpen the sword with good versus good. Well. If, you, if you're multiple on offense, defense, you get those 15 practices where you got good versus good, and they're seeing a lot of different stuff that prepares you for the different offenses you'll see from week to week and the different defensive fronts and coverage you'll see from week to week. Then you come back from, for you know, August, you get like 27 practices before your first, your first game, and a lot of that's good versus good. You know, so now if you're an option team or a 3-3 stack defense or a run and shoot team, then all you're doing is preparing for just that. You know, that's all you see. Every week we see odd front, we see odd front, we see odd front, we see odd front, and then we go to the Virginia State game and they're in four down. Well, you, you, just, you just messed yourself totally up. You know, every week when, when we played against you guys when I was at Concord, I knew you were going to carve us up. The off you were too good at the offense. But I also knew there was times where the ball was going to be on the ground 
You know, also knew that if we got ahead, you were going to have trouble coming back. We had some advantage. Now, we didn't get ahead. We did, it was back and forth. But there are some, there's, there's as many disadvantages with that type of offense as there are advantages. But to answer your question, I want to be multiple. I want to start in two back. I want to have tight ends. I want to end up in one back a lot. We're going to throw it. We're going to be balanced. Uh, when I say balance, I define balance as not 50-50 run pass, but we're going to be able to run it and throw it out of every set. We will probably be more 60-40 run if we're ideal, to be quite honest with you. If you're 60-40 pass, those are probably the games in which you're behind and you're trying to catch back up. Uh, also, I want to be balanced. I don't want, you know, everyone knows, hey, number five's getting it. I don't want to be that way. I want it to be five gets it, three gets it, nine gets it. You know, I want, I want different guys touching the ball. So the defense has to cover all of our eligibles, the width of the field, the length of the field, the entire field, you know, to just, you know. I mean, and what you guys did was great. I mean, you almost won a national championship. But to me, you know, that just ain't me. <laughs> you know, we can win it the other way. Many yeah, every, everybody else has. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to call you out on it, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the way everybody else plays. <laughs> you have a 3,000-yard passer this, this fall. Yeah. Um, and I mean, going off of that, yeah. what's that going to mean for switching some of the personnel player-wise here? For example, Evan Sims, the quarterback here. Yeah. I, I don't, I, how are some of these guys going to match up to your new – your new offense. Yeah you, yeah, you might want to ask me that in April. I mean, that's a great question. I'm interested in answering it myself. Um, here's the thing I will say. Those slot back guys, I mean, they didn't grow up running, diving, and catching pitches. You know, they grew up playing in the backyard, passing and, and running and catching and playing on seven and sevens and doing all these. So the thing that cracks me up about this, that's just, it's just a scheme. You know, the skill it takes is the same skill. Catching the ball is catching the ball. You know, throwing the ball is throwing the ball. You got to have a quarterback, you know, from what I've saw on Evan, He's a big kid, or not, he's a skinny kid, but he's a tall, lanky, great athlete. You know, name the offense those guys don't fit in. I mean, you know, they fit in a lot of offenses at a lot of positions, and there's a chance he's the quarterback. I, I, don't, I don't know his, what he looks like. So for me to comment on him would be just silly. Uh, but from what I've seen, I mean, he was, was he not like South Carolina Offensive Player of the Year in high school? And he runs a 10 900. I mean, yeah, you, you think he can't play? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think we'll be all right. You know, I mean, he'll be catching it. He, I mean, when I, my first year at Concord, I had an option quarterback in high school that was unbelievable that we recruited. And Grossi was our quarterback throwing the ball to Mayo. And I did a package for about 17, 18 plays a game where Evan came in and we ran riding to side and pitched it out there. And I was just trying to make up stuff to make yards because we weren't that great. But we, we found a way to, you know, to win more than we lost that year. And so I'll, I'll make it work. I mean, I'm interested to see that myself. But there's a lot of – one thing I will tell you, I'm sure there's a lot of big kids here who are playing DN or are big receivers who are a tackle, who could be tight in tight bodies. And, and then obviously, I mean, we got, we got about – I met this morning, we got about a quarter of our recruiting budget, budget available. So we may bring in one or two guys. <laughs> but we, didn't, we didn't win all these games by me being just smart. I mean, you got to have people. So we'll know how to get people. Anyone? Have you met with any of your coaches or players yet? Uh, I, met with, I met with two coaches. I met with Arkita and Aaron. Uh, I met them last night, actually, at the, at the uh, hotel. Uh, Dr. Powell was walking in as they were coming from one direction, and we all walked in the same, at the same exact time. And I assumed that he had told them, but he loved surprises so much he didn't. So they, <laughs> <laughs> he got, after having dinner with him last night, I realized he really likes that, that part of it. Uh, so I met with uh, – I talked to them last night. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, you know, uh, Flick and Brent, we've talked about some of the budget things and, and uh, you know, who, who a little bit talked about the roster a little bit. And then I was here this morning a little after 8, and we met as, a, we met as the three-man staff that we are right now and, uh, and talked about what we would need moving forward. And uh, kind of they filled me in more on how, you know, things work here procedurally. i got to learn more about Lenore Ryan than Lenore Ryan has to learn about me initially. And that's uh, – it's hard for me to sell a school if I don't know a lot about it and I've – I mean, it's not different than most places, but there are a few things that are different, and uh, that's going to be my job over Christmas. So, and I haven't bought my wife anything for Christmas. She said that I don't need to. Uh, which, she knows. She always says that, and it's not true. It is not true. It's not true. And uh, so, I may take this helmet with me and give it to her. <laughs> so, but in between the the 
hour of Christmas shopping I'll have to do for her, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be calling some coaches. And I turned my phone off because this jacket was vibrating off of me. I mean, people, you know, wanting to know about jobs. And, and uh, you guys kept it a secret a long time, I'll give you that, but you couldn't keep it a secret the whole time. And, uh, and I probably spilled the beans a little bit, too. You know, you tell one or two guys in confidence, and they tell everybody in confidence, and they tell everybody in confidence. <laughs> and that's kind of the way it works. Um, but I had to tell some coaches because I'm, I'm doing more recruiting on coaches right now than I am actual players. I like your new tie, Coach. You know, is it after that out, now, in full disclosure, is this new? Oh, it's not. Well, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. She must have known something years ago that I didn't know. Because I'll be honest with you, this is, really, this is really IUP college, right? And that was our big rival at Cal. So it's amazing. This amazing. This was in the closet. <laughs> A little bit warmer weather here. You looking forward to that? Oh yeah, I mean, how, I mean, my kids laugh. How many times have I got out of the car, you know, to go to the mall or somewhere with their mom and said, "Man, I'm out of here. I got to go south. This is terrible." And, and that's just me being me. Uh, we saw now. I imagine it's not always supposed to be 72 degrees on Christmas Day, as I saw there. But it would be fine with me if it was. You know, it wouldn't. And, and yesterday evening, you know, I'm driving Missy through the neighborhoods and stuff, and. We took a turn and we went down by the golf course here and I said, man, this is here would have sealed the deal if they had showed this to me on Thursday. I wouldn't even have to think about it over the week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm all for good weather. Coach, can you comment on um, just kind of your philosophy with dealing with character and integrity and just kind of where you, um, how you like to guide your, your young guys? Yeah, that? you know, I mean, a lot of that starts with the recruiting process. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it, it, one thing I've learned as a head coach is if a kid does something stupid at three in the morning on his own, it's your fault, you know, and that's, uh, uh, but that comes with the biggest check and it's saying head coach on your door. I mean, I, I, I live with that. Uh, we're going to try to recruit the best kids we can. We're going to try to guide them along the way. I've got a saying, you, you got to know when to, to save, salvage, or let go. You know, if a kid is, if he's savable and I could help him and get him to where he needs to be, just like one of your own children, if they act up. You know, you know how many times I've threatened to put Jared in military school growing up? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, honest to God, there was one night where I, like, had the Fork Union website open. And, 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 you know, as a dad, you're like, I'm doing it wrong, and you're frustrated. But, you know, he, he's a, they're great kids. They're straight A's. They do well. And that's more a testament to their mom than to me. But, you know, along the way, you gotta, you got to guide them. They may be, you're going to recruit good character kids, like, like you have your children, got good bloodlines, but you gotta, you got to be a dad to them. And part of being a dad is saying no. You know, part of being a dad is, I mean, you know, I'm in the north. They're not big on smacking them around, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you, you know, so you try to save them and guide them the best you can. And, and then salvage them. And then there may become a point where, you know, you say, you're not my child. You know, I've got to, I've got to let you go. You're, you are messing it up for the rest of this team. You're, you can't, I can't coach you up. And uh, uh, when I first came back to, when I came back, when I left Concord to go to Cal, they called me back and offered me the head job. And then it was, uh, well, you know, Coach, Coach Luck was going to stay on another year. And, and there was some of that stuff going on. So it was kind of a year of assistant head coach, going to be the next head coach. And, and uh, I'd been, you know, in the staff meeting for two years, I've been running my mouth the most, and then all of a sudden I'm not the, the main man anymore. Uh, but I'm kind of in. So it was an awkward situation. And uh, there was times where we had kids who I didn't think were acting the way they needed to be. And, you know, I got a saying that, you know, every now and then again you have to shoot a hostage to let the rest of them know that you're, you know, you mean business. So we will, you know, we will hold them accountable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I know that went over back, but you, you, you. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but that, uh, didn't know what now? Oh, the, the defense coordinators here before. Yeah. I don't, no, but that, you know, that's important. You know, we believe in character. Um, we're going to try to coach it. And uh, one thing that I did learn the past year is, is I created a leadership council and kind of had the players police their own locker room a little bit and, um, you know, empowered them a little bit with it and didn't pick the 12 best kids, didn't pick 12 seniors. You know, I, I, I picked it, you know, it was my, based on who I thought. And I had some kids <coughs> on there who I thought needed lead more than leadership. But I thought if I empowered them and, and gave them some, some, you know, some authority and more of a conduit directly to me, that that would help them along the way, and I like to think that it did. You know, we, we had a we had a good year with that. You know, this past year at Cal, but things happen. I mean, I, I've heard some of your problems and some of the things that have happened here, and 
you know, we don't want that. We, we want to win the right. We, the, the funny thing is people think that, well, you could just go recruit all these kids and they can do whatever they want and they're going to show up on Saturday and be successful and win for you. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You're either a winner or you're not. You either do right or you don't. The kid's not going to be a kid who stays out past curfew and doesn't go to class and, you know, isn't a good person, and then he's going to show up for you on Saturday and be where he's supposed to be and be a good teammate. It ain't happening. You know, he's got to be a do-right guy all the time. So I want to do that because it correlates to winning. You know, we had a discussion last night. Does, does, do those type of people win, or do, do winners create those type of people? And, and I asked Dr. Powell that, and his answer was yes. You know, it's, it's both. You know, they work hand in hand. So uh, to get to your deal, I mean, that, that's, you know, we're going to try to recruit it, and then we're going to try to coach it, just like everything else. You know, if a guy runs fast, I'm going to try to recruit a fast guy, and I'm going to try to give him, help him run faster. You know, so it's, it's just it's part of your job. I don't give short answers, by the way. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I like to bring them all, you know, but they have they have options, you know. I mean, I don't know if Kyle will promote from within. Uh, I don't know if they'll go outside, um, you know, which those things change their options, you know, as to what they can and can't do. Um, you know, some some of them want to come. You know, I don't, I don't want to get into the names of who wants to do what because. They've got their own personal, you know, contracts and, and futures and players that they're recruiting that they got to deal with. But, but I love those guys. I mean, I would love to. I would love to bring them all. And uh, we had such a small staff there that I could bring them all to be numbers wise. You know, now fitting that into a, a budget and there's some questions with that. But, you know, I've got two guys down here, who I think are very connected with with the south and understand what it takes and are connected with the current roster which i think that's as important as the recruiting when you get these jobs everyone wants to know who you're going to recruit well you got 137 guys on your roster what about those kids you know we better we better figure that out you know first i'll go on the road in a in a week or two weeks when i'm whenever you know school starts back up for the high schools i'll go on the road while these guys are out but when you guys all come back i'm gonna meet with you individually i'm not gonna go on the road why, why go meet other kids when we have kids here who need who need address. Now, my staff will be on the road. You're not going to meet them. I'll, I'll say, hey, this is this coach such and such, coach such and such. Today's the last day you're going to see them for a couple weeks because I will put them out on the road. Uh, and then I'll be joining them. But um, I also have a couple guys who are very connected down here I've worked with in, in the past. You know, one lives in Charlotte, another one lives in, in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, I'm in contact with them and I'm trying to recruit them, you know, to be part of this deal. And uh, when you hear the names, you'll, you'll probably know know more than you think you do uh, but anyway so I would like to you know it's staff's about makeup you know it's about a bunch of guys working together it's not just about eight guys from a particular area I think the newness of this of me and the six guys coming in will help the guys that are here you know the GAs and the two full times and I think the guys that are here will help the six guys that come in because they'll give us some of their thoughts and uh, I think the more sets of eyes you get looking at the same thing differently the better off you are you know, it's really not that hard. I mean, when I went to um, when I went to Concord, my first team meeting was very similar to this. There was people standing up everywhere, and there was players there. And um, I said, "Who wants to, you know, win a national championship?" And everyone raised their hand. You know, who wants to? And but they didn't win a game the year before, so you know, I was thinking maybe none of the hands were going to go up. But they all went up. And who wants to be all conference, all American? And they all raised their hand. And I said. Uh, I said, well, I know how to do that, but that's easier said than done. You know, you got, there's a lot of, you can't just say that. It's like saying, I want to be, you know, I want to be rich or I want to marry such. You, you can't, you got to show evidence of how, how you're going to go about doing that. You know, to be that good, you got to be committed. And that will be, you know, we'll set the goals. You know, I'll let the team set that goal immediately. And then, uh, and then I'll hold them accountable to that goal. So whenever they miss class or whenever, they're not working hard in the weight room or wherever they're not taking notes in the in the position meetings and you know, when I'm pushing them and they, they're tired of hearing from me I'll say hey you're the one that said you wanted to be all American you know you're the one that said you wanted to and, and I've, I've got the proofs in the pudding with me I mean I've, I've, had, I've coached all Americans you know I've coached NFL players I've coached guys who were so-called you know average players you know I, when I went to Concord Joe Greenway was one of the last guys on the depth chart when I left there he made all league and the next year he was defensive player of the year. Now that wasn't me. That was because he had it in him, and all I did was give him a roadmap of how to get there. He had to go do the work. But for every Joe Greenway, I could show you two or three guys that stood beside him that walked out of the weight room and said, "I can't do this." You know, so that's that's what I'll tell the team is, you guys, you have goals and you've talked that you want to reach these goals. 
well, let's uh, let me hold you accountable. And it won't be hard. It's, they, the kids want to do. The funny part is, kids want to do well. Oh, I'm not sorry. One more question, Coach. Uh, there was some rumbling over the past couple of years of a lack of consistent physicality in practice and yeah. such. Do you do you plan to bring a hard nosed mentality to practice every day yeah. in and out that will translate to the field? Well, I mean, you know, with all the things that are going now with football, I mean, you have to be smart. You know, we're not going to come off the bus tackling in practice, uh, but I mean, it's it's. You got to, it's a physical game, you know, it, it just, it is what it is. You're not playing golf, you know, it's, it's, it's football, you know, so yeah, I mean, we'll have, we'll have our share of board drills and Oklahoma drills and inside of something we'll do every day. Um, I started this about three years ago at Cal, I start every practice with red zone, you know, so I started high red zone, then low red zone the next day, and then every third day is goal line, and there's only one way to do goal line. I mean, you got to, you know, the ball's just far away, and you ain't like, huh? <laughs> you know, so you get after a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, I would like to think, when I was at Concord, a, def a opposing defensive coordinator told me, he said, man, off tape, it didn't translate how fast you guys played and how physical you were. And that was like the best compliment I ever had in my life, you know, and how, how and, and I'll be honest, that wasn't just me. I mean, that was, you know, as the head coach, you try to set that standard, but it was the coaches. They coached them that way. And, and, and I say it all the time, you got to live fast. You got to live physical. You got to get used to it. You know, when, when we have, we'll have t shirts made up that we, we warm up the way you work out. Now, that's cool and that sounds, but you better warm up hard, you know, if you're going to say some stuff like that. So, yeah, we will, we will beef. I don't know what you did in the past. You know, I don't know if, um, I don't know if you went helmets every day, but we'll, we'll, we'll get after it a little bit. Yeah. Especially in the spring, you got six months to heal up. And Flick will get them right. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, in watching the national championship game, we too, the Northwest, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically heard most of their great players were transferred mm -hmm. from D1. So I didn't know what your feelings were. Well, I'm all for great players. You know, <laughs> no, that's, you know, I mean, we had that at Concord or Cal as well. Uh, you're going to have transfers. I mean, the best way to explain it is you're going to build a team the best way you can. And uh, the way I would like to build a team, you know, it, people think of the New York Yankees as, as a, a team of free agents, which it has become. But in the 90s, when they were really winning, it was Posada. It was Bernie Williams. It was uh, Jeter. It was, it was homegrown Yankees. And, and they said, well, man, we may not be good enough. Let's go get Clements. Well, yeah, okay. That's what we, your core has to be for your guys that, that you grow into the program. You know, recruiting is the most important thing you do in a recruit, in, 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 as a coach, and the second most important thing is develop them once you recruit them. So you don't want to get a guy for six months because you really didn't develop him. And I've had some talented guys. I had a five-star quarterback who, like the head coach that I had at, at Cal at the time, you know, we all wanted him. He was a lead 11 kid. And uh, he came in the huddle the first day and didn't know the name of the place, you know. And, and, and I was, it was my job to get him to where he needed. Now he ended up doing really well, so he's probably a bad example. But, it, yeah, I mean, at, at this level, you're going to have some transfers. Uh, we will take some. I do not like one-year transfers, to be honest with you. I hate guys who just come in and play that fall and leave. I, don't think, I think it makes your job too hard as a coach. And it's not fair to the kids who've been here. And you just told them for six months how important winter conditioning all this was, and then this kid comes in and doesn't have anything to do with that and he starts in front of them. That's not always right. Uh, but the world ain't always right either. I mean, it's not always fair. You know, so that's, uh, that's the message. Also, I've had kids who've done it and worked out great, and I've had kids that weren't good. I would like to see our transfers if we have them to be two-year guys at least. Uh, I'm a big fan of the four-year transfer. You know, in, in Western PA, we had a lot of those. Well, in Western PA, we had a lot of kids that he wasn't supposed to go to Pitt to begin with. And then he went there and realized he couldn't play there. He wasn't supposed to go to Eastern Michigan. And then he came back and he had four years. We, we loved those transfers. I hated the, I hated the one-year guy. I shouldn't say that because a lot of them were successful, but I'd rather them be four-year guys or two-year guys. And if you've got 100 kids on your team, I mean, you're talking seven, eight, ten kids. You know, out of the 100, you can't build it the other way around. If they outnumber you, you get in trouble. But, yeah, you're right. You watch Northwest and those people, they just, it's kind of how they do it. It's a four-year junior college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Coach, from the Bay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.